assalamu alaikum uh, this is our seventh lecture uh, for the series of linear algebra classes that we are taking right now um, i will in this lecture go over an extension of the gaussian elimination where we will be using the gauss jordan method so just think about it that the gauss jordan is an extension of the gaussian elimination method in which you basically don't stop uh, gaussian elimination actually stops at a stage where um, it has made an upper triangular matrix so it takes a and convert it into u however we stop here but in case of we, we do back substitution and, and solve all the equations here. But in case of Gauss-Jordan, it continues after that. And it makes sure that all the diagonals, uh, the pivot uh, values are one. So all the diagonal values has to be one. It could not be any other number, any other non-zero number. It should be one. And then, the off diagonal elements, like if it is a first one, then the two zeros, the two positions below should be both zeros. And if it is the middle one, then the position above should be zero and the position below should be zero. And if it is the lowest, like in the third row, if it is one, then it will have both zeros on the top. So in other words, it will try to convert the a matrix into an identity matrix um, because one zero zero in the first row and zero one zero in the second row and zero zero one in the third row that constitutes an identity matrix so um, the gauss jordan method is a way to convert a into identity matrix so if you convert A into identity matrix, you don't need to do back substitution and all the values can be found very straightforwardly. So I will just go over an example. As you can see in this example, I open a video for you and I will just increase the size or make it full size. And you can see here we have three equations, x plus 3y plus z equal to 10. So this is our first linear equation. The second linear equation is x minus 2y minus z equal to minus 6. And the third equation is 2x plus y plus 2z equal to 10. So we have three linear equations in three unknown. So kind of uh, what we call them a nice system because in this system, the number of unknowns and number of equations are equal. So by that virtue, we call this a nice system of linear equation. So now in this case, uh, we will start with what we call them uh, an augmented matrix. And you can see that we have now an augmented matrix. Um, we just ignore x, y, z for the time being and just put all the coefficient matrix here, one, three, one, one, minus two, minus one, two, one, two. And then we put this small bar, vertical bar, just to distinguish that we are going across the equal sign. And then we put all the constants here, which we call B. So this is 10 minus six, then again 10. So we call this augmented matrix. And now we are going to first apply the Gaussian elimination and then we will continue on towards the Jordan. So let's first try with the Gaussian elimination. So in case of Gaussian elimination, uh, you have to find the, the first pivot. So the very first location, the very first non-zero uh, number that you see in, in the first position. This position is usually called A11 because this is the first row and the first column. So your first pivot should be at the first row and at the first column. So this is indeed a pivot because this is one, okay? And now using this one, uh, we will try to eliminate the one below it and the two on the third row. So the, these two numbers that where my arrow is, my cursor is, 
you can see that we need to remove this one and we need to remove this two. So we will do this process. We will do a row operations. And you see, if I multiply R1 with minus one and I add it to the R2, now whole this is going to change this row two. Similarly, this operation minus two times R1 plus R3, whatever the resultant came out, I have to go and replace R3 with this particular resultant that I got from this operation. So if I do these two operations, now keep in mind last time, I also told you how to convert these into matrices. I will just go over it in a short time, but for the time being, let's assume that uh, this is just the way it is written in the English. So it's, it's in an expression like minus R1 plus R2 means the operation and the arrow means that this operation gives you a, a result that has to replace the R2 row. Similarly, this minus two R1 plus R3 is an operation and this operation is going to result into a row that has to replace the row which is R3. So that's why this arrow is like this. So now we move forward and I just tell you what happened. So now you see that um, because of that operation, the operation did not happen on row one. So the row one remains as it is, one, three, one, and 10. But the second uh, row is changed and the third row is changed. So I can just go over it and you can see that. So you see now the, the second row becomes zero, minus five, minus two, minus 16, zero, minus five, zero, and minus 10. Now, when I reach, when I reach to this, location okay and if if i want to do uh, basically um the operation further you can see that here the the first pivot location has two zero so it is okay very nice and the second pivot here is is minus five but this minus five need to um eat up this minus five. So there should be a zero here. That if, if I get a zero here, then I will say that um, I got uh, the job of Gaussian elimination done. Because in Gaussian elimination, we are going to make this as a triangle, this upper triangle. Anything outside this triangle should be zero. So this should be zero, this should be zero, and this should be zero. So right now I have this zero, this zero, but I don't have a zero here. I need to convert this value to zero. So in order to do this, I will take this row and I will add it to this, this row. So if you do this operation, um, you will find out that, so now you can see that if I do R2 plus R3 and replace R3, then I will get a zero here. So after this, I will just give you a chance to look at this one so now here now you can see very clearly here that we have one three one and ten is the first row second zero minus five zero minus ten so nothing happened to second row because the, this operation has resulted in replacing r3 so this is the operation that have resulted in a special type of row and that row went and replaced the already placed R3. So you see before it was zero, minus five, minus two, minus 16. And after this operation, this operation, it becomes zero, zero, minus two, minus six. And now you can see very clearly that um, I have what you call them a, a U matrix here because this was my A and now it has all the required characteristics of a upper triangular matrix. So it, if the A become an upper triangular matrix, then basically it means that I am, I am done with the Gaussian elimination, but I will not stop at this because I'm doing this cost Jordan method. So the Jordan came afterward and he continued further. Now what we are going to do is in Jordan method, uh, we have to make this guy minus five to be one because 
Jordan wants all the diagonals to be one, and this minus two also need to be one. And then he also says that anything above and below the pivot should be zero. So this has all the below element entries are zero. If this is the pivot, then this three also has to be zero, and this one should be zero, which is already zero. And then if this is a pivot, then it also need to have these people zero. So it, in other words, this whole A, whatever this is, now right now this become U. So this U has to be further processed to become identity matrix. So if you wanted to continue further with the row operations till you get this guy as an identity matrix, then it means that you have done this Gauss Jordan method. So we will continue uh, with this whole operation. And I can just, just, it means in order to remove this minus five to become one, I have to divide the row, the whole row two by minus five. And also in order to make this guy minus two, as as one i have to divide this whole row by minus two so these two operations i have to do it so after doing these two operations i end up into you see the first one three one is the same as above but the second one this this minus five become one now so zero one zero two before it was zero minus five zero minus ten so this this row has become now zero one zero two and and the last one becomes zero zero one three so this is actually happened because i did r3 divided by minus two so if, if i do this whole operation but the, for the sake of uh, completeness he should have done r3 divided by minus two and then arrow towards r3 so it means that you did this operation and now you're replacing r3 and this should also be r2 divided by minus five and then there should be an arrow towards R2, so it means it tells us that this operation has produced a row that need to replace the already existing row two. So if you do this operation, and now you can see that I have a three, so I have to do some operation to remove three. So I will use this R2, I will multiply it with minus three and add it to this one. So in this way, this three will be eliminated. So. And I also need to eliminate one. So for, for eliminating this three, I will need row two. Uh, and for eliminating this one, I will use the row three. So we can see that I will need two more operations to really convert this A matrix into an identity matrix. So so now you can see very clearly that what happened. So I have now uh, one, zero, but this one and then zero one zero 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 one. This was the operation that I did minus three times R two. I add it to R one, and this whole operation have resulted in a row that need to replace the already existing row one. So one three one ten has been replaced by one zero one four. However, this one is still problematic. So uh, as I told you, I will use now R three to re to eliminate this one. Okay. Now, if I do this one, um, so you know what I did? Minus um, R3 plus R1. So I, I, I multiply this row with minus one and add to row one. And I can, with this, I have removed this one. So you can probably see it now a lot better. So you, you can see here now, that this zero one zero 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 one two three and then you get a zero and then this one is replaced you see you see now now you can see very clearly here that this particular a matrix because this was b column and this was a matrix so now a matrix become completely an identity matrix you see this is an identity matrix, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So now we will stop because we have reached to the end of our Gauss-Jordan method. Now here we don't need back substitution. Uh, we can very easily find the values of uh, the unknowns. So you can see from here very clearly the X, Y, and Z values. 
So if I just, just bring you back and I tell you, now x is, is one, first unknown, y is two, okay? Z is three, you see? Very state, yeah, very straightforwardly, you find the solution. You see, very, very clearly you find the solution. So if I do this, you see that this is x equal to one, y equal to two, and z equal to three. So this is the solution. You don't need back substitution in case of uh, cost Jordan method. Now, now this was very straightforward approach because you don't need to actually think that much except that you need to find out the right multipliers that you need to multiply it with the row and you need to add it to the appropriate rows to get this operation for, for Gaussian elimination, you have to go from the original matrix, the coefficient matrix that you, you made out of the linear system of equations into U. Whereas in, in the Jordan, you don't stop at U and you still process it till you convert this U into an identity matrix. Now, now here is something that I want to tell you. The matrix U that you got is called reduced echelon form. Um, but the, the, the format that you see right now, where you have the pivots only on the diagonal, then everything else has been zero. With this, this one that you got an identity matrix, this is called reduced echelon form. So you have now echelon form and reduced, reduced echelon form. Um, I will just tell you something, some nice properties about reduced uh, echelon form. Um, so now if we look into this both, so row echelon form and reduced echelon form. So let's say we have, I wanted to now go a little bit deeper into it, so I want your attention here. Let's say our target matrix is, our coefficient matrix is two, four, one, one. This is our coefficient matrix. Now for rho echelon form, which is actually a result of Gaussian elimination, what I will do, I will make an augmented matrix. So I will take A, I put a vertical bar and I put the B. So let's say we don't know the B and we are playing with the Bs. So the B values are B1 and B2. So two, four, one, one, B1, B2. First thing, that he did was normalize row one. Normalize row one means that you have to make this guy, the first pivot as one. In order to make this one, I have to divide this whole row by, by two. So it means I have to multiply the whole row by one half. So if I multiply this by one half, that basically means that uh, I am, going to generate a matrix that will do this. So for in order to make the matrix, you see this, this two, four, one, one, B1, B2, this is the same as above, but I will multiply it with this matrix. This matrix will basically convert this one where the second row will remain as it is, but the first row will be divided by two, okay? So how I did this, so you can see very clearly here, this is a pre-multiplication, so, this first row, one half and zero. This means this one half will be multiplied with the first row and zero will be multiplied with the second row. So it means that the only effect of this one half and zero is on this matrix is to only divide the first row by two. So if you do this, you will get this one, one, two, and this B1 will become B1, one half B1. The Second row does not change anything. Why? Because there is a zero here. So if the, because of this zero, uh, the second row remains as it is because you have a zero one. So the first row will give you this first row. The second row will give you the second row. So just think in that way. So this second row when multiplied with this whole matrix, does not change anything because this zero will be multiplied with the first row plus one will be multiplied with the second row and you ultimately end up with this second row. So now you have this normalization operation that 
instead of writing that you divide row one r1 by two and you make an arrow and r2 instead of doing this we represented this whole operation by this matrix so once you have this matrix it automatically means that you have this uh, one half r1 towards arrow so let, let me let me write it down uh, probably this might be more useful uh, annotate and i have to pick a marker maybe this marker is already here yes so i will do one divide by 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 two and then this is my row one okay and i will put an arrow okay and then i will do this r1 you see this is the purpose of normalization so when you when you say normalize row one this is what i'm doing because i wanted to normalize so that my first pivot is one so th this is this is my first pivot you see this is my first pivot and i have to make it one so this is my first pivot this is my first pivot and this is two i want to make it one so in order to do this i have to do this operation so either i write it this way or i write this matrix look look at this one this whole matrix is actually this english expression or mathematical expression i have written one half r1 and after this operation what happens i replace this with row one so in order to do this i have created this matrix so this matrix is actually doing this whole operation okay so now um if if i move down and in the meantime i will annotate and i will erase this so that you are not confused i will just erase the whole thing now because okay and now if you try to do this uh, annotation okay and i will just do the annotation now and now if you see it says after this what is left over now if you look into this particular a um i got my first pivot as one so it's a nice thing um but the problem here is now below this pivot position i have one i wanted to make this one also zero because pivot column should have only one pivot everything else should be zero this is what is what is known as reduced but i'm right now i have to do the upper triangular matrix because i am doing the echelon form which is actually gaussian elimination so i don't worry about anything above but everything below the pivot should be zero so this one this number is below the pivot i have to make it zero so in order to make it zero i have to do an operation on this one using this one so i will take um so i will do um minus one okay minus one times times r1 okay here you go r1 so i will do minus one times r1 and then i will i will add it to r2 if i do this operation okay then you will see very clearly what i mean by this operation because if i do this operation minus one times one and if you add it to this one so this will eliminate this number as zero and now i will after this whole operation whatever the result comes out i have to put this result in the location r2 so you can see 
what I mean by this. So I'm I'm taking minus one times r1 and I add him to r2 and whatever this happened, I'm putting. So this is a mathematical expression I wrote, but I, I don't like the mathematical expression. I have to develop a matrix for it. So here is that matrix. You can see this matrix. This is the matrix that exactly doing whatever I have written here. You see this? So this this expression that I have written here is represented by this matrix. Because if you look at this matrix, first row is one, zero. So it means this row is not going to change the first row. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want row one to be changed. Now here is, so here I'm doing minus one times R1, and this one is one time R2, and now they are added, so minus one times one, two, and one time the second row, one, one, and then they are added, and I got this whole row, zero, minus one, B2, minus one, half, B1. But the, the good thing is that this particular part becomes zero. So now I have, if, if you look into this, this become a triangle. You see this triangle? Look at this triangle. So now you have a triangle, one, two minus one and below this triangle you have this zero so it means this is an upper triangular matrix so once you reach to upper triangular matrix it means you have done the gaussian elimination um so now if you're doing gaussian elimination you will stop here and you will do back substitution and you will get the answers okay but in case of reduced row uh, echelon form or i will say um gauss jordan you will not stop here um so last example was about this. However, here I want to show you something else. Uh, sometimes we wanted to find A inverse. So there is a very nice trick where you can find A inverse using Gauss-Jordan method. So let's look into this uh, because solving it further using the, the Jordan can be left as an exercise for you. So you now understand what I mean by this. So I will just clean it up. Mm. I will do the erase and then I will put the erase thing here just to remove this this whole thing for you. So I will remove this one. Okay. Now I'm cleaning the whole blackboard for you and i think this is the way to clean it because i don't want you to be confused by this when we go for this method where okay okay almost i am successful to a larger extent maybe it needs a little bit more stubborn anyway um so we don't bother by it okay so let's now so i will just take the annotation okay so let's go down to this trick that i told you so here is the trick if i wanted to have a matrix a which is two four one one and i wanted to find its inverse so in order to find inverse, what I will do, I will make an augmented matrix, but this is a very special type of augmented matrix. Here, I will put a matrix A, then I will augment it, append it with an identity matrix of the same size as this A is. But keep in mind, you can only find A inverse for square matrices. So it means that you, will, if you have a two by two here, then you will have a two by two identity matrix. If you have a three by three here, then you will have a three by three identity matrix. Uh, but anyway, this is the, how you do the construction. So if you order to find the inverse, we, our starting point is we made this augmented matrix. And now our attempt will be to reverse the order. So if I can, I will do all the row operations such that this side, which is 2, 4, 1, 1, which represents A, if this side become I, then this whatever will come up here, this will represent the A inverse. You see that the trick is you start with A with I. 
Now you do the operation until this A become I. The moment this A become I, this I will be transformed into A inverse. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So we are going to do this. Okay. And how we are going to do this, I'm going to show you now. Oh gosh. Okay, I at least remove this one now. I remove this one now. I remove this one now, hopefully. Okay, good. Now I have removed everything and I can use my annotation again. Now you see, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to normalize the row one. For normalization, I use this matrix. You can see this. I have explained its construction in the first part. So by this, I will normalize it, okay? I have to create one here. Uh, then the two comes here, one half and zero, one, one, zero, zero. So this whole operation, I have to do it on this whole augmented matrix, okay? But now, in order to make this identity, I need to do further other operation because I have to remove this two with a zero. This one has to be removed. So if I can do this zero and this zero, then I will get identity matrix because you remember a two by two as I'm writing it right now, it's two by two identity matrix is one, zero, zero, one. So I have to bring uh, this side into this format. Okay, if I can bring it in this format, then it means I have converted this side into identity. So now to remove this one, I will do the clear column one. So clear column one is actually what I did is I took my row one, multiply it with minus one, add it to row two. So if I do this using a matrix, then this is the matrix which is doing the row operation. After doing these row operations um, on this matrix, you got a zero here and you got a minus one. So in order to get a one here, I have to multiply this uh, second row with one. So if I do this second row with one, okay, and now I will end up with, okay, I will end up with um, zero, one. So this is normalization. You see this, this, this matrix is doing normalization. And after this, I will do clear column two. So in order to clear the column two here, okay, um, I will, because in, in column two, when I mean clear two means I have to remove this two and have to replace this two with zero. So in order to do this, um, I have to basically use this third row. So if, if in third row, I multiply with minus two and add it to first row, then this two will become zero, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm multiplying this second row with, with minus two and add it to the first one. So this become one and zero, okay? And if you do this operation, you see that after this, you actually end up with this one, zero, zero, one, the one that that is our desired. But in this, in the process of making this 1001, we have changed our original uh, 1001. You remember in originally this location was 1001. Now this location become minus one half to one half minus one. So in this process, when, when this side become identity, this side become A inverse. So this is our A inverse. So in this way, you can find A inverse for a matrix by doing these operations. So when you do uh, Gauss-Jordan uh, method, Gauss-Jordan elimination method, so on an A, um, I will just say um, an A times I matrix, then you will end up into getting an A inverse, okay? So this is a nice trick or I can say application of Gauss-Jordan, which not only solve linear system of equations, but can also be helpful in finding the A inverse. So with that, I will basically end up uh, this lecture. And if you have any questions, you can send me the comments and WhatsApp messages, and uh, uh, you can even uh, put comments on the, 
under the YouTube uh, video that we upload. So with that, thank you very much and we will see you next time.